Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In today's video, we're going to talk about the McGill's Torso Endurance Test Battery. I think they use all five words in the title when they're explaining it in their textbook. This is going to be in chapter 10. I believe it's page 413, but I'll bring it up and we'll take a look at it. If you do have your hard uh, hardcover textbook, absolutely use that. Look, I use this digital format, just easier to do the video for you guys. But generally, what I would be doing is using the the uh, hardcover book for sure. If I'm actually doing the read, write, recite method, which I highly recommend. A couple of things before I actually go into it uh, with you on this is that keep in mind that from a testing perspective, it's not like you're going to get 10 questions on the McGill's torso test. However, because it's in chapter 10 and this is an assessment the assessment chapter, there's muscular assessments, which is what this is, and it's an endurance test. Remember, there's uh, any number of assessments that ACE is going to kind of recommend. And, and keep in mind, correctly, they have said that don't do all the assessments simply because you see them in this one chapter. Some of them make sense, others not so much. Uh, the McGill's test is actually a pretty decent test if you're going to do it the entire the entire route, because it, it's going to give you a really good assessment of the endurance capability of the of the entire core, front, back, and sides, right? So the anterior uh, flexor components, the posterior extensor components of the core, and the side or lateral stabilizing components of the core. And you know, just from a real world perspective. When there are muscle imbalances, when uh, muscles do not have the, the relative uh, functional strength in opposition to their antagonist, right? So flexors and extensors, uh, right lateral, left lateral, for instance, if there's imbalances there, this is generally, generally, not all the time, is what causes uh, dysfunction, pain, uh, postural issues, things like that. So if you can do a fairly quick, and the McGill's test can be done fairly quickly, um, relatively quickly. If you can get a good assessment of your client's right lateral stabilization, right uh, front, front and back, it might be helpful because ultimately, what are you going to do? You're going to implement your programming to satisfy the need of, for instance, strengthening one side over the other, for instance, or strengthening the extensors uh, versus the flexors, but just understanding that could be very helpful. So and from a testing perspective, you'll probably see a question related to the McGill's test, but it'll be part of the broader, generally it's part of, uh, part of a broader sort of questioning scenario related to the type of assessments, core endurance or core stabilization endurance type assessments. And so let's go ahead. Let me pull up the... Let me pull up the chapter for you again. It's on chap uh, page 413. This is in chapter <clears throat> chapter 10. It's just one of, and, and you can see here the, the Y balance. Uh, there's the unipedal test. <clears throat> Number of different tests that are that are being given to you. Uh, um, look, I'm not going to say you're going to use these um, at all, if ever, but you know they're there for you to check out and you got to pass the ACE exam. So here we have the McGill's torso muscular endurance test battery. So key thing to remember about this assessment is that is a muscular endurance test. And it's a test, what they call a test battery, meaning it's just multiple tests that are going to be um, brought together. Uh, the data, the information allows you to uh, come up with a conclusion about whatever it was you were testing. So a test battery, there's three, three main tests there's the flexor, what we call the uh, trunk flexor endurance test. There is the uh, trunk extensor, right? So front and back, and then the lateral. So basically it's four actual components to the test, but it's the th it's three basic tests, right? Again, just the lateral, you're doing a left and a right. So you're doing four things, but it falls under three basic, uh, three basic tests. And that's why it's a test battery. So the trunk flexor endurance test is simply going to check um, how how much muscle endurance is is in the anterior or the flexors of the hip 
and the spine and and the entire anterior portion of the core. So that's what that's what that um, test is going to check for. And I'm just going to kind of toggle through here back and forth. And here they show you what the muscles are. Very good. That's fine. You should, of course, memorize those. Not a bad idea. Then there's the trunk lateral <clears throat> endurance test. And keep in mind, the lateral endurance test is actually two actual tests. So a left and a right. And just so you know, that's actually really important to know the, the bilateral uh, endurance um, stability that a person has. So if the left side has high level of endurance, but their right side, right in their core, we're talking about, does not, that's what creates or can create dysfunction. In general, um, folks, clients that you see, uh, they're basically a hot mess when it comes to their core stabilization to begin with. Um, you will find some folks that have really good outcomes on this test, but uh, generally you're going to see folks with some major, major dysfunction. So that's the lateral and you can see the picture here, right? They're going to do the left and the right side. And then the third one is the trunk extensor endurance test. Now, let, let me do this for you first. Let me get out of that and take a step back because here's what ends up happening. And one of the reasons why I do this video is because students ask me, what do I have to memorize? Oh, there's so much information. Here's the thing to keep in mind. The test itself, the procedures, all those, they're generally not going to ask a lot of questions on that. It's just too precise, too much, too, too much precision in a question. <clears throat> so the procedures are not difficult to memorize. What you really want to understand about, about the McGill's test is that it has these three testing elements to it, right? Flexor, extensor, and lateral, right? So left and right. And when you get to the part where they give you the table, they're going to show you how to calculate the, the relative stability uh, based on the time an individual was able to hold these particular positions, right? And I'm not going to get into the specifics of the test. Again, it's not difficult to actually implement. Trying to memorize all that information while you're going through it is just unnecessary. Get a basic idea. But what I would write, and this is from a from a testing memorization perspective. Again, you think about it this way: when you've gone through chapter ten, what were you looking at? the The general understanding is that once you hit a particular chapter, the recommendation from a study standpoint is create an outline of the of the chapter. So you would have all the different elements of that chapter, <clears throat> and then one of the subheadings would be muscle endurance testing, right? And then under that subheading, you would have the McGill's test, right? The endurance test. And I would write that down. Now, now that I've got my sheet of paper that I'm going to use for my read, write, and recite, and look, I'm not even showing you the, the textbook. You don't need it yet. In one sense, McGill's test. Okay. Three, three tests. Write them down. What are they? I've said it enough already. What are they? Flexor endurance right? Trunk flex, flexor endurance. What's the next one? You could do the lateral flexor endurance and then the trunk extensor endurance, right? So those are your three, write those down. Three tests. I like to use arrows just for the visual effect. You could use colored, do whatever you have to do to make this stuff stick in your head. So flexor, trunk flexor, trunk lateral, trunk extensor. And then that's what I would write down. And then I would simply go trunk flexor test. And I would write down any pertinent information. It's not a lot, not at the very beginning part of taking the notes. So I hope that makes sense from a studying perspective. Look, if you really want to learn how to do the McGill's test, that's great. But remember that we're balancing, we're balancing here. We're trying to learn information so you can get the questions right. And then if you want to actually learn how to do it and actually implement it with clients, Great. You can learn how to do that. Just read through it. Have a friend, family member here with you and do it on them and actually read through it and go, OK, so procedure A and do it with them. Time it because that's what this is. It's a timed test, just so you guys know. But there's another part. Let me show this to you because there's another part here. I told you I was going to toggle, toggle back and forth. Let me go back to the very first part. And what I want you to do is have a look at this first paragraph because it's important. And specifically right here 
on this last part. See what I'm pointing to. Um, poor endurance capacity of the torso muscles or an imbalance among these three muscle groups, the, the flexors, extensors, and lateral stabilizers, uh, is believed to contribute to low back dysfunction and core instability. A great way to ask a question, if I was going to create a question, would be I would start back the other way. Um, the three muscle groups believed to contribute to low back dysfunction and core stability can be tested by which test? And then you would get, see how I'd work that? I just made that up. Um, but, the, but the idea is that if you know that, that's actually this part right here that I'm circling is probably good to know. Here's something else to keep in mind. When you read through each of these, right down in here, this is a great question because Ace is really big on uh, safety, just as a for instance. So look at look what that last. Let me see if I can. Um, let me see if I can get this. There we go. So, whoops. Check this out. Now look, we're talking about the trunk flexor endurance test. This test may not be suitable for individuals who suffer from low back pain. Have had recent back. Look, I'm just going to give you. I'm going to give you a heads up. When you read through stuff and you see stuff like this, write that down. This test may not be suitable for individuals, okay? I would write contra, contra indication, and then just write it down. Uh, low back pain, somebody, somebody, you gotta memorize this. You're gonna see this a lot. Again, it's a safety concern, so ACE puts that as a very high priority when it comes to questions. Um, have had recent, okay, recent, recent back surgery and or are in the midst oof, acute low back flare up. In other words, they're really in pain. Their low back is in a lot of pain, right? So low back flare up. And that's what I write down. And then I can move on. Hope that makes sense. The idea. Um, so that's what I would be writing down that area right there. I'm not sure you need to write down equipment. It's a stopwatch, a board, and strap. You could write that down, of course. Uh, the trunk, and by the way, that's the that's for the flexor. Now watch this. Trunk lateral endurance test. By the way, pick, uh, this figure up here shows you exactly how they do it. I'm not going to go into how they do it, okay? But look, look, the test may not be suitable for individuals with, now remember, now we're on the trunk lateral endurance test. So remember what I said, I would be, I'd make a arrow to the trunk uh, flexor test. And what's pertinent to know about the trunk flexor test. Somebody's got low back pain. Don't be doing it. They just had back surgery. Don't be doing this. Well, what about the lateral test? Cause you're going to have them on their side. And that's, that's what these pictures are showing you. So see, obviously shoulder issues can occur. Okay. Does that make sense? So what do you have to look for? Shoulder pain or weakness and who suffer from low back pain have had recent back surgery. Well, now we're just talking the same thing. You're simply adding on the shoulder component to it. I hope that, again, I hope that makes sense. You can read through the pre-assessment. Just don't freak out and get anxiety over all this information. Okay. All of this stuff right here is either pretty straightforward or it's really not that pertinent from a from a testing perspective, but it is good information if you're actually going to do it with clients. And I keep saying that, um, keep repeating that um, over and over. If you're going to actually do it, then go ahead and give it a shot. Sure, why not? Uh, but the trunk lateral endurance test now has these components that are important to know. Don't do this. It's contraindicated if somebody has a shoulder issue. That makes sense. One of the other things to consider in the real world is don't do don't do two of them and not do the third one. I mean, I guess you could if you if you really wanted to. But generally, the battery of testing is designed to be done so that all three of the tests are done, i.e. flexor, extensor, and lateral. I hope that makes sense. So again, let's move on to the extensor, right? So here we have... And I'm just kind of toggling for you. Here we have the trunk extensor endurance test. 
right? So by the way, yes, look at the figure. You can see this is how it's done um, in, in general. Uh, you may get a question or questions could definitely involve the name of the particular muscles that are involved in the test or that are testing the endurance. Remember, this is endurance. So muscles are going into isometric contraction and you're basically just timing it. Um, and however long they can hold it for, and you write down that time because on the next page, um, you're going to see the, the, uh, figure that they use right here, right? And this is what they're giving you now, classic, classic question. Um, you'll see it in, uh, you'll see it in practice exams. You may even see it on the actual exam. But a great question that I would ask if I would, if I was doing it is something related to this particular this particular figure. So the side bridge, okay, extension ratio should be less. And that's by the way, that's why once you get here, this is one of the most critical parts of this assessment, right? Are the numbers. And uh, what I would do is I would simply write that down, make it a simple, simple chart, write it down. And know that the uh, the proper flexion extension ratio should be this um, uh, side right side bridge to left side bridge scores should be no greater blah blah blah. You'd write that down. Don't let it freak you out and don't let it give you anxiety. Okay. The point is is that they're pretty straightforward numbers. So I again, you do your back extension, whatever. Um, now you get to the interpretation and use your use your um, uh, your bullet points. Okay. Flexion extension ratio, flexion extension ratio. By the way, it's not extension flexion ratio. Flexion extension ratio is what should be less than one. And that's all they're doing for you at this point. So equals should be less than one. I hope that makes sense. This is pretty straightforward. Same thing with the right side bridge, left side bridge scores. Um, side bridge and extensor ratio. So basically you're doing three, you've got three scores you're tallying up and that's going to tell you what they've got a problem or an issue and one side or one front or back flexor extensors are, are not as um, stabilization wise as capable as the antagonistic part of the um, part of the testing, right? So flexors could be relatively weak extensors comparatively relatively strong from an endurance perspective i guess i shouldn't say strong um basically more endurance capable meaning they're able to hold it in these positions for a longer period of time because that's all you're doing is you're just measuring the amount of time take a look what it says uh flexion score of 120 seconds and extension score of 150 there it is great question great question if okay okay let me get you away from here if in the mcgill's test you have a flexion extension score of 1.2 what would be what would this be an indicator of and you'll have duh, 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 duh. Well, you tell me, what's it supposed to be? It's supposed to be less than one, right? It's supposed to be one, something like that. Ideally, you should be able to hold a flex position, right? Just as that first one, for as long as the, the extension position, maybe a little bit longer on the extension than the flexion. But they should be really, really close, which means that like they, like they gave the example, 120 here, 120 seconds here, 150 seconds here, 120 over 150 gives you a ratio. Um, it's less than one. So therefore, let me bring you back in there just so you got an idea. For example, a flexion score of, let me get rid of that and that. Flexion score of 120 seconds and extension score of 150 generates a ratio score of 0.8. Okay, flexion extension ratio should be less than one. The understanding, by the way, just you know, just so you understand, the understanding here is that your your lower back, the extensors of your spine and hip, technically should should have a greater endurance capability than the flexors 
at the sp spinal flexors and the hip. That's all that's saying. Uh, generally, we'll see folks where it's pretty close. Um, you'll see numbers if you or actually time this. I'm not sure you'll see 120 seconds, but you'll see numbers that are similar. So remember, that's why it's got to be flexion over extension. The numerator has to be the flexion score because generally that number, those seconds is generally going to be lower than the denominator or the, or the extension score. Hope that makes sense, right? A uh, smaller number in, in the numerator over the denominator gives you a, a ratio less than one. And that's the idea that the extensors would have greater endurance capability. Same thing on the lateral, right? Side lateral. What, what do you think they should be? They should be essentially the same, right? You don't want one side having more endurance capability than the other. Um, and then the third one, which is actually a pretty helpful, again, pretty helpful way of understanding core stabilization is the side bridge extension ratio should be less than three, um, three quarters. So for example, a right side bridge score of, and they're just giving you numbers, seconds and extension score, right? We already knew this one from the from the original test you did for the flexion extension ratio, right? So 150 seconds generates a ratio score 0.59. It should be less than 0.75. All of these, by the way, these are all up for grabs from a question in, in a question that Ace could ask you on the final exam. So again, let's let's kind of take a backtrack. You're going to do three tests. Well, you're doing four tests, right? They're timed. You're doing a flexor test. How long can they hold it for? Bing, 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 bing. But 120 seconds. Great. You write that down. 120 seconds. Side, right side bridge. Let's say, I don't know. Let's say it's 70 seconds. Left side, let's say that's 70 seconds. Yay. Um, and then the extensor score, like they have 150 seconds. You have all the numbers you need now. You got all the numbers you need to to run the to run the analysis or data data analysis on this test, right? 120 flexor, so you can do your flexor extensor, right? 120 over 150, very simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, left, right side bridge, right? You got your two numbers for that, and then your uh, side bridge to extensor, right? By the way, it wouldn't matter if it's left or right side; they should be. Ideally, they should be exactly the same or at least really, really close. So it wouldn't matter which one you use. And so it's that one over 150. And that's how you would uh, work the data analysis on that. Again, from a testing perspective, these would probably be the questions I know I would write and ask, right? So it's just a couple of numbers that you need to know. But remember the other thing, really important tip about this is the safety, the safety part of it, which is these are, this is a, this test is contraindicated. This test battery is contraindicated if somebody has what? Lower back problems, right? Or if somebody has a shoulder issue, right? They can't do the side lateral. So you got to keep that in mind as you're going through this. Look, as always, as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them below. Please subscribe to the channel as well and hit the notification bell. If you need any information on our exam prep itself, just click on the link Below, we are here to help you to pass the ACE exam. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week. Thanks.